Hey everybody, good morning. It's uh, John Losh here for Fulfill Your Ministry. It is the uh, 13th of August, 2020, and I want to talk to you today about something that uh, was actually missing in my early spiritual life, and that is a thing called discipleship, okay? Um, you know, in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, uh, there's Stephen Curtis Chapman for you, for the sake of the call, the theme song of Fulfill Your Ministry, set that aside. Um, you know, when Matthew 28, 19 and 20, um, when Jesus says, all power has been given to me on heaven and earth and go therefore and make disciples of all nations. He didn't say go and make converts. Although, yes, people have to be converts first. They have to accept Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, uh, accept his free gift of salvation. The fact that he uh, came to this earth, uh, born of a virgin, died on the cross, lived a perfect sin of his life. Uh, you know, lived, born of a virgin, lived a perfect sin of his life, died on the cross, rose from the dead, and offers them salvation and eternal life and forgiveness of their sins. And ask him to come into their lives, make him their Lord and save them. But, uh, you know, and that is obviously very important. They have to receive him. Um, but she didn't say go make uh, converts. All, you know, he said to go make disciples. Okay. Um, but uh, John one twelve says, as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to those, even to them that believe on his name. John three uh, one through in John three one through twenty one, Jesus talks with Nicodemus, and uh, one of the ruler, religious rulers of the day, he was actually a, a follower of Jesus. He just didn't let him be known because he came to him by night. Um, talks to Nicodemus and told him, you must be born again. That's the, the first essential step, okay? But um, a disciple, um, according, you know, the definition of disciple is a follower or student of a teacher or leader or philosopher. Um, in this case, the only begotten uh, Son of God. And um, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Um, and uh, I want to share with you a passage from Ephesians 4, which I should have actually already had open, but I'll uh, find that for you here real quick. Okay, Ephesians 4, 20 through 24. Okay, well, went one page too far here, I'm sorry. Okay, you, um, but if you did not learn Christ in this way, but if indeed you have heard him and have been taught in him, just as truth is in Jesus, you put off the, the concerning the former conversion that the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Therefore, putting away, uh, okay, through, in true holiness. Okay, so you got to put off the old man. Okay, you got to put on the new. And how do you do that? Well, discipleship is a process um, that starts with, first of all, getting a new believer into the word of God. Um, Got to have that daily relationship with God, uh, daily time in his word. And I'm going to do another video probably later today from my church library that I just recently got in the privilege of, of revamping and uh, having a blast with that. And uh, it's going to be about devotions. OK, so but anyway, um, usually that's where somebody sets you down in the beginning with a set of lessons. OK, this is a book called uh, Directions. It's from Grace Way. Um, it's what we use at uh, Solid Rock Bible Church uh, to disciple people. It's 234 pages. And it has 18 different lessons, and each one of these lessons has a different day. They have different days to the lessons, so it's a pretty thick book, as you can see. It's not you know thin at all. Um, so it's got different different days to each lesson. Uh, lesson one: the Father, God's gift of life to me; the Son, God's sacrifice to me; the Spirit, God's presence in me; uh, truth, God talking with me through the Bible; prayer, me talking with God; guidance, discovering how God directs me; worship, living my life to glorify God; witness, proclaiming my faith through baptism and communion. Community, being a part of my local church family. Uh, responsibility, a biblical perspective on my approach to life. Giving, turning my life inside out. Spiritual gifts, discovering who God may be to be. Sin, winning the battle within me. Uh, problems, my divine path to maturity. People, resolving conflict around me. Evangelism, sharing my faith. Uh, lesson 17, making disciples, reproducing myself. And lesson 18, finishing strong, presenting myself to God. So it's somebody sitting you down on a regular basis. Could be once a week, could be a couple times a week, could be once a month. However often you guys are going to meet according to everybody's schedules and everything. 
um, and uh, taking you through a set of lessons like that that basically shows you how to live this new Christian life. Unfortunately, this is something that was uh, missing in my life when I first received Christ when I was 11 years old. And a few years later, I accepted him in December of 81. A few years later, by probably 85, 86, 87, somewhere in there, I had wandered away from my faith. Um, I literally told God one day, if this is what your people are like, forget it. I'm going to go back to live my own life, do my own thing. Or so I thought I was, anyway. Um, God still lovingly pursued me, didn't leave me, didn't forsake me, was always there, was always pursuing me. Um, this is a book the, from a church. This is a book from a church that I used to be in. Uh, it's called Discipleship One. And right here on the cover, you can see the goals, um, and that is to uh, for relationship with Christ, uh, fellowship of believers, membership in the local church, and partnership in ministry. Okay, and um, so relationship is God's word and spirit. Uh, fellowship is with believers, uh, membership in the local church, and partnership in ministry in the local church. And it's got, I believe, sixteen lessons. Okay, and um, it starts out with lesson one on discipleship. So what you know, what is discipleship? Um, and then lesson two is, um, I just went past it here. Lesson two, lesson two here. Okay. So discipleship is lesson one, uh, salvation. Or, uh, so the, the first one is it's not technically lesson one. It's just an introduction. What is discipleship? So lesson one is salvation. Uh, lesson two is baptism. And then, um, lesson three, or no, no, I'm sorry. So lesson one is salvation. Um, lesson two is, I'm sorry, getting that mixed up. So there's the introduction on, okay, so lesson two, lesson one is uh, salvation. Lesson two is eternal security. Lesson three is baptism. Uh, lesson four is the Holy Spirit. Uh, lesson five is the Word of God. Okay. Lesson six is prayer. Lesson seven is the will of God. But uh, so anyway, you're you're kind of getting the idea here um, on on what this what, what all this covers. Um, there's a couple of lessons missing out of this book may have been taken out by me or somebody here uh, here a while back and not put back. But anyway, you're getting the idea of kind of where the lessons go. They're teaching the most important uh, lessons that people can learn as a new believer. Okay, so that way you don't feel alone in walking this new walk of faith. Um, you know and um, and then it, it goes from there to actually being a lifetime, lifelong commitment for that person to come alongside of you and to walk this journey with you. Because even though they've been a believer longer than you, they have more time in the Word of God, in church, things like that. Um, that doesn't make them perfect, just like you're not perfect. None of us will be able to be perfect this side of heaven, so I'm certainly not, never will be. Um, and I, I'm just, I, you know, I, every day I wonder why, you know, God even wanted to save me, but he did. So, hey, that's great, and I'm, I appreciate that. So, you know, but anyway, um, to walk alongside of you, to guide you, to mentor you, to help help you learn, help you discover your new life in Christ, um, but also to be a, a prayer partner, someone you can pray with, you can pray for, um, someone who will uh, teach you, guide you, but also hold you accountable for being in God's word, being in church, uh, having regular time in God's word, uh, prayer, um, you know, and just every aspect of your life, your relationship with other Christians, your relationship with non-Christians, your relationship when, you know, you're, like I said, you're part in the church, uh, getting involved in ministry, um, just, you know, discovering your spiritual gifts and using them for God in the church and things. Um, so this is such an important aspect um, that was missing from my early life uh, because no one ever set me down and took me through a set of lessons. It was, let's say I got saved, I started Christ in 81, it was like 94, 95 before I was finally somewhere where somebody uh, set my wife and actually my wife and I both went through the set of lessons with these of these with this couple from from the church we were in at the time um, and we're taking through these discipleship lessons and then trained in how to take other people through them and things like that so I use both of these materials that I just showed you um, if I'm gonna disciple somebody usually I've, I've used the discipleship one because I've had that forever but uh, once I came to Open Door, I got the directions book. And although I have not had a chance to utilize it with anybody yet, I eventually will, probably, hopefully. Um, but, you know, it's also something some people reject because some new believers, you know, the Bible says that our adversary, the devil, uh, Satan, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And some people just don't understand that principle. And soon after they, they receive Christ, you know, Satan starts nibbling on them. 
okay, just whispering in their ear, telling them, oh, you don't believe that Bible stuff, and you don't have to go to church, and you don't have to make these changes, and you can still live whatever life you want to, and live in whatever sins you want to, and it's fine, and don't let them judge you, and they're not perfect either, and, you know, just all these lies that people are buying, and, you know, so there are some people that feel Satan nibbling on them, and they immediately kick him to the curb and say, Satan, take a hike. I don't belong to you anymore. I belong to Jesus Christ now, okay? Um, but then there's others who don't even realize that there was a rolling lion standing in front of them and that they've been swallowed whole, okay? And when you try to encourage, you try to let them know this, they're like, you know, they want to throw out the, the I don't judge thing or the, you know, they, they want to throw out, you know, you're not perfect, don't, you know, talk to me about this, this, that, and the other. Um, and they still want to go back to living their own lives. And unfortunately, some of the consequences of them going back to living their own lives, doing my own thing, when I, all those years that I was, do live in the prodigal son life, doing supposedly doing my own thing, live my own life. Um, some of my friends that I hung out with and, and things and live with during that time um, ended up with, you know, consequences that have changed their lives forever. And are, some of them are still going on today because they can't kick the habits that they got into back then. And I mean, they can. OK, there is power. There is for, there is forgiveness. There is restoration. There is change. There is growth. Everything's possible through Christ. But I'm saying on their own trying to do their own thing without the power of God, without the power of his Holy Spirit, without being in God's word, without being in a local church, um, you know, without guidance from someone to disciple them and mentor them and all these things. Yeah, they're not going to kick these habits. And it, some of those consequences are going to stay with them for the rest of their lives. And whether it be drugs, whether it be an alternate lifestyle, whether it be, you know, no matter what the situation might be, it could be alcohol, like my father was. Um, it could, you know, name it, name your, your habit, you know, that, you know, is not right. You know, it's not right with God. Um, and it can stick around for the rest of their lives. So anyway, um, discipleship, if you're a new believer, if no one has ever discipled you, go to your pastor, go to a leader in your church, somebody, uh, someone you trust, talk to them about getting discipled. What kind of lessons do they have that they can sit you down and go through with you and teach you how to learn, live this new life? Maybe the person who you uh, were led to Christ by, if it was an individual that sat you down and introduced you to Christ and, and showed you the verses in the Bible and, and prayed the prayer with you and things like that, maybe that person can do it. But sometimes um, the person that led you to Christ is not necessarily the best fit. Um, they can be, but in some cases they're not. Um, and there needs to be somebody else step in. Um, you know, but anyway, go to somebody and talk to them about getting into these discipleship lessons and whatever material you have there. But at first, go ahead and just get into God's word, get into prayer on a regular basis, stay in it. And my next video will be on devotions and I'll show you some devotional material and stuff like that you can use and some ways that you can do devotions on a daily basis. And uh, so anyway, um, hope you enjoyed this video and a little more Stephen Curtis Chapman for you here uh, for the sake of the call. And uh, once I get that opened up here. Okay, so anyway, be encouraged. Um, I love you. I care about you. I want you to grow. I want you to have someone to guide you and lead you and mentor you through this Christian life. Don't go it alone. Do not go it alone. Christians are not lone rangers. Okay, even the lone ranger had Tata. Okay, so that's your, you know, the disciples had Jesus, Paul had Barnabas, Timothy had Paul. You know, all these different people had someone to come alongside of them and introduce them to these, you know, principles of, of Christian living and to take them through those lessons. And if you're humble, if you're willing to accept those lessons and the, the and they're, they're chock full of scriptures, um, you know, to, to for you to go through, you know, one person reads this scripture and the other person reads that scripture as you go through it and stuff like that. You can meet at a restaurant, you can meet at your home, you can meet at your church, you can meet in a park somewhere, just wherever, wherever everybody's comfortable for and whatever works for everybody's schedule. And uh, you will grow and you will get better and you will be a better Christian, a better person, a better husband, a better father, a better brother, sister, mother, you know, whatever your roles in life are, uh, you'll be better in all those directions because of it. Um, and it will set you a foundation. And then eventually you can multiply yourself by taking other people through these similar lessons and encouraging them, mentoring them, walking this walk of life together. Um, you know, life in Christ was meant to be done together, never alone. Okay, never alone. Don't ever let yourself be deceived by that. Because Satan wants to get you separate. Okay, he wants you to get you separate from the church, from your mentor, stuff like that. Um, and because that's the main place that he can uh, swallow you whole. So, beloved, be encouraged, be loved. Um, and I will see you next time here and fulfill your ministry. And if I don't see you here, I'll see you in the air.